What's up, y'all? My name is Caitlin Donato. I am the National Director of Fitness and Program for Tough Mudder Bootcamp. I'm going to be coaching us through about a 30-minute challenge today. And now for more information on the challenge, on the inspiration behind it, um, for the things that I want you to call upon and think about uh, going through this challenge, take a look at the blog right up. But essentially the idea is this, we all have goals or we should all have goals in life. Uh, those goals might, to be clear, have nothing to do with this workout, with fitness at all. Uh, goals can be anything and everything and they should be. And just as important as having those goals is, is creating markers along the way to get to those goals. That way we can check in, we know where we're at in progression to get to that goal. And we're also prepared for when life throws us curveballs to stay on track and get back on track. So that's the idea. Today's goal for this workout is going to be for us to complete 10 rounds of three of my most favorite total body exercises. There will be some curveballs every other round. More details on that to come. Um, what you will need is a set of weights. I said 12 pounds or above, uh, nothing too heavy. Some of us can even get away with 10 pounds because the volume, the overall amount of reps will be high. So we're able to get away with um, a little bit less weights. If you are in your home using household items, I love using uh, two jugs of water or two large um, laundry detergent jugs as well. So if you've got dumbbells 10 pounds or above, ideally 12 pounds or above, work with what you've got. If you need to be creative, like I'm going to be, go for it. I've got a set of 10s, I've got a set of 5s, so what I'll do for the reps that I can anyways is I'll um, double those up and hold both of those um, for a little bit more weight. So always about getting creative to get the most out of your workout. Now I'll demo the exercises. There's only going to be four different movements today. Before we do so though, let's get a little bit of a warm up in here. So starting with some jumping jacks, just getting that heart rate up, getting the body moving, the joints moving, getting your mind awake as well. So also I would encourage for you to get your favorite playlist going. Let's go down into a squat, sink heavy into your heels. <coughs> Excuse me. Weight back, chest up. Um, if you need to your first few, go a little bit more shallow. Don't go quite as deep into the squat. And as you feel those hips maybe start to open up a little more, you'll go a little lower and lower. Good. We're going to walk out on this one. So hinging at the waist, walk your hands. Ooh, that plank. And you'll walk right back out. <coughs> Excuse me. Walking out. All right, so get your favorite playlist going. Whatever it is for you, whatever gets you moving, whatever gets you pumped up, um, I'll leave that up to you. Same thing I said last week. If you're looking for some inspiration, you can certainly get a free um, Spotify account. You can follow me, you can follow, there's so many people. Um, that would be better than me to follow um, on Spotify, but I certainly have a bunch of um, playlist on my on my profile so whatever you want to do just get some jams cranking um, and that will help us so much especially through this challenge the goal is to complete 10 rounds of three of the best total body exercises there are squats we'll go through these just one more time and then we'll get to it so get your jams Get your 10 pounds or above dumbbells and get ready. 10 rounds is how, uh, is how we'll attack this workout. Now, first round will begin with 10 reps. We will have 10 reps of all three of those total body exercises. Walk it back. When we repeat for the second round, we will have nine reps of everything. When we repeat for the third round, we will have eight reps of everything. <coughs> Excuse me, got that tickle out of my throat. There we go. So every round, we decrease one rep. So we'll start at 10, and by the time we finish, we will be all the way down to just one rep of each. 
So each round sucks a little bit less as the rev count comes down. Now, we've got a goal. The goal is 10 rounds. We've got markers along the way because our markers are gonna be the rep count counting down from 10 to one. There are also gonna be curveballs, just like in life. Every other round, we are gonna have lateral rebounds to complete. They suck, just a heads up. All curveballs suck, but we won't lose sight of the marker we're at and we'll keep chipping away at it until we get to that goal. Now, here are your exercises to complete. First one we will do will be a ground to press. Again, I gotta kind of adjust the grip on this one, so I might be losing that second weight here shortly. But for your ground to press, you're gonna come down as low as your range of motion will allow. Stance is about hip width apart, heavy in your heels, weight back, chest up, dumbbells as close to the ground as you can. We're gonna stand up, curl the weight, and press it overhead. Let me back up a little bit so that's in camera. But one fluid range of motion all the way overhead, and then we control the weight back down. Second exercise is a weighted burpee. Weighted burpee dumbbells are gonna come down to the ground. We'll jump out. Keep in mind, if your dumbbells are round, it makes it more unstable. That's part of the beauty of this. You're gonna jump back, jump in, make sure your butt is low, stands up with the weight. So the good news is there's no push-up needed. There's no jump at the top needed. We're just adding some weight. So here is a little bit more unstable, and here we get a little bit more work on our legs. Option if needed, do that without any weights. All right, so without any weights, you come out in and up. Um, last one, that's my train of thought. What am I doing, where am I, what day is it? All right, weight's gonna come overhead. Now you can do this with two of those dumbbells or one. Depends on your grip, depends on the weight that you've got. It's a dumbbell double crunch. So your arms are gonna be extended overhead, legs are straight. We'll tuck our knees into our chest and we'll bring the dumbbell up over your shins. Right back down. So knees tuck into your chest, head, neck, and shoulder come off of the ground and you bring that weight up over your shins. Option if you need to scale down is body weight for the double crunch. Those are your three exercises. Those are what we will complete 10 rounds of, starting at 10, working down to one, but here's your curveball. Every other round, we're gonna stop and complete 20 lateral rebounds. You'll get one of your weights uh, and just put it in the center of the floor. It'll give you that visual, visual of what we are actually hopping over, but it's one, two, three. You'll always have 20 and they will always suck. Just FYI. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, if nothing else. All right. So we begin first round at 10 reps. I'm going to start the first round anyway with this little added weight, but we'll see how this grip goes. All right. So on your time, but I will be going through it and talking through it um, as best I can anyway, as we get after this. So 10 ground to press. We will begin, start my clock in three, two, one, let's go. Ground to press is one of my all time favorite total body exercises. One fluid range of motion, stand up and feel that power transfer from your legs up your body all the way into that overhead movement. The beauty is also in the control on the way back down. 10 ground to press. <sighs> nice, good. And then when you finish those, you've got 10 dumbbell burpee, just with two dumbbells for me on this one. Out. Make sure your butt is low so that you keep that pressure off of your lower back. Kicking your heels a little wider than the dumbbells. Good. Take a second, notice I do take inventory before you stand up from that squat. You get 10 of these. Make sure that butt is low, make sure you're standing through your heels. Good. 
Heart rate gets a little recovery on our third exercise. Third exercise, dumbbell, double crunch. 10 of them, and then we will have to finish our first curveball, our first 20 total lateral hop overs. Good, heart rate comes down a little bit here. If you can take a challenge, keep your heels off the ground for all of the double crunch. But if you're trying to keep your heels off of the ground and you feel your lower back arching off of the ground higher than the natural curvature that your back already has, then don't take that challenge. It means that tapping your heels to the ground is a better option for you. So taking inventory, is your back arching further off of the ground? If yes, that's okay, but keep, um, keep your heels on the ground. All right, 20 total lateral hop overs. These suck, let's get them done. I also don't wanna roll my ankle, so I'll get those out of the way. Here we go, 20 total, let's go. Every time you land, you get to count a rep. Go at your pace, an option if needed, tap over. Good. Sooner you get them done, well, the sooner they're done. <laughs> I didn't really have a good ending for that. <laughs> Brace your midsection like you're bracing for a sucker punch. Always up and over. Good. Good. Finish all 20 of your reps. 10 rep round is done. Woo! Get a little of water. That means we have hit our first marker along the way to our goals. But <clears throat> we've got a long way to go. So let's keep working. Now we repeat all three of those exercises at nine reps. Starting with the ground to press. Deep breath. Give ourselves just a couple more seconds here. All right, nine reps, good news. We don't have the lateral um, rebound or hop overs this round. Only every other. Here we go, nine reps. Could be worse, could be 10. <laughs> Power on the way up, control on the way down. Good. Making sure we're not losing our back at the top. That means don't over arch your back. Keep control and you do so by keeping that midsection in tight as you lift overhead. Good. Nine dumbbell burpees. Butt is low as you stand up. Woo! This one spikes the heart rate, which is fantastic for some cardiovascular training. Running, biking, that is not the only way to get your heart rate elevated and to get some of those cardiovascular benefits. Some of these big total body movements because they require you, good, to work so many of the muscles in your body and it forces that heart rate to elevate, working harder to pump blood to those muscles, therefore elevating that heart rate and allowing you to get those benefits in those higher heart rates. Good, we've got nine here. And then we have closed out another round. Woo. I've got one more after this. Perfect. I'm done with round two. Get some water. If you sweat like me, towel off. I'm always toweling off. I forgot to pull my mat out today, so I have a nice Sweaty mark on my floor. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Now, no lateral rebounds. That's awesome. Means we've got a next round, though. Moving down to eight reps. Ooh, we got our second mile marker completed. 
Let's keep working. Eight, ground to press. As low as you can. You might notice that you can go a little bit lower now that your body is really loosened up and warmed up. Listen to your body, always. It may try to tell you something during that warm up. All the way to the cool down. Good, each round sucks a little bit less as we bring that rep count down. Eight dumbbell burpees. Out, hand, butt is low, stand up. Keep these going at a pretty good pace, but don't lose your form. At the high plank position back here, don't let your hips drop. As you get tired, very common mistake, we want to protect that back. So keep that plank strong, keep your heels all the way underneath you before standing up. All right, dumbbell double punch, remember, Think about that lower back. Don't let it arch further off of the ground than it is right here. If you can maintain that slight arch and keep your heels and your hands from touching the ground, beautiful. It means you've got fantastic core strength to be able to do that. If not, that's wonderful too. It's about you. Everybody, everybody is different and everybody's working towards something different. I would rather you scale down and do it correct so that you get more out of it. All right, eight reps is done, but my friends, we've got that next curveball. Oh, 20 total. Now, the tip I started to tell you at the end, brace that midsection as if you were bracing for a sucker punch. That's gonna help you maintain control and make this even more of a total body movement. All right, here we go, 20 total. Let's go. To make it harder, you can go higher and bound a little further. Can also pick up the pace. Again, take it to your level. Keep that midsection tight. There you go. Told you these sucked, we're almost done. Oh. Woo. They should suck always. Oh, we need to do them right, okay. While we recover, let me tell you why I programmed that curveball. These lateral hopovers, this is a plane of motion, it's called the frontal plane, doesn't much matter, but it's a plane of motion that we live our lives in. We are always having to move our body in this way. However, it's a plane of motion that a lot of our workout programs don't frequently allow our body to train within. So I like to very strategically work in uh, lateral work where you're forcing your body to work side to side. Today's, it happens to be power. It doesn't always have to be though. All right. That also killed a little time to let you recover. Now it's time to work. We have worked our way down to seven reps. Ooh, that's nice. Here we go. Seven reps, starting with ground and press. Nice. Power up, control down. Do not lose that lower back at the top. Don't throw it out. Stay in control. There you go. Loosen those little weights. Seven dumbbell burpees. Now, as you kick your feet in, make sure your heels are flat on the floor. If you don't have that range of motion in your hips to kick your heels flat on the floor, then I want you to walk in instead of jump in. Because if you are standing up from the balls of your feet and not the heels, you are putting a lot of undue stress and pressure on your knees. So stand and make sure you kick your heels all the way under. If you can't, then that means stepping up is better for you. Seven, double crunch. Good. 
Good, head, neck, and shoulder off of the ground. Just slightly. Ooh, one of my favorite weighted core movements. Oh, we're done. I love the pullover because not only are you getting the core and the ab work, but also that pullover. So working a little bit more back, slight chest, shoulder work as well. Get some water towel off. All right. That was an odd number. That means no lateral rebounds. All right, another marker is done. Woo, 10, 9, 8, 7, all done. We're now working on six. Six, ground to press. If you are on pace with me, we will get this challenge done in less than 30, but we have got to keep working. Here we go, just six. It's tricky though, as the rep count decreases, the totality of how many reps you've already done is stacking up. It's one of those sneaky workouts. We don't realize how much you've done, which is part of the beauty in it. You're only ever focused on that very next marker in front of you. And after doing 10, eight, or 10, nine, eight, seven, six reps, doesn't seem so bad. I love designs where we can trick ourselves and not kind of realize how rough it was until it's over. Good, heels are flat, stand up through them, butt is low. All right. Ooh, I'm sweating all over this floor. It's like I'm mopping it, I'm mopping my floor. Two for one, <laughs> a workout and a cleaning. <laughs> there you go, just six. Oh, we got the next curveball though. 20 total, lateral hopovers. Oh, all right. Let's get it done. Remember the scale down. If at any point you need it, you're stepping side to side, especially if hopping is no good for you. All right, let's work 20 total. Get it done. Landing soft and right back up. I feel like I'm skiing. I don't know what that means because I live in South Florida. I just feel like I was imagining what it would feel like to ski. This would be hopefully a lot more fun, a lot more speed. <laughs> Clearly I know nothing about skiing. The only skiing we do in Florida is water skiing. Totally different. All right, some water, towel off. Whoo, six rep round is done. I hate those. I hate those. Just like I hate eating kale, but they're so damn good for you. All right. Whew. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. All done. <coughs> Five rep round. All right. This is going to go by quick. And we've got no lateral hopovers. Here we go. I don't even know what that was, by the way. I don't, I don't know if I could hit that, that pitch. Oh, I hope you have music on in the background. I'm jealous of you. Mm. I'm just playing Cardi B in my head. She's keeping me going. My pump up jam. Just five. Could be worse. Could be 10. Could be nine, just five. There we go, heart rate's gonna come down. Double crunch. Beautiful work. If you need to scale down, do it. Don't feel like you should be able to go harder because the rep count's coming down. Remember, this is an endurance workout. You have already completed quite a few reps at this point. So don't feel discouraged like, oh, well, it's only 
five reps, why did I have to go down in weight? Um, because you did a shit ton of reps already, <laughs> that's why. So don't be discouraged at all. In fact, just keep moving. 10 is done, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, all done. Four rep round is going to be the hardest only because we have got those lateral hopovers again. And I always like to tell you when the hardest part of the workout is coming up because there's a lot of power, <coughs> excuse me, that we can gain from our bodies when we know that we are about to hit the hardest part and it doesn't scare us and we don't back down, but we continue to push forward through that hardest part. There is a lot of strength that waits for us on the other end of this four rep round. All right, let's get through this first. Four ground to press. You know the deal by now. Remind yourself of the form as you get tired. Take a look at your knees. Your knees should be holding steady over your ankles. A lot of us, especially as we get tired, your knees will want to roll in. So make note of that, make inventory. Try to steady them over your ankles. The reason they want to roll in this is a muscle imbalance, very common for most people. But when we train, we want to be aware of that imbalance so that we can get those muscles to fire evenly. Here we go. Four. Nice. Double crunches are my favorite because they are so sneaky. You do them with, you know, relative ease. But every time I do them, the next day, I'm like, holy cow, what did I do? My abs always burn so bad. Um, so I'm all about that. All right, race that midsection. Like you're ready for a sucker punch. Get your stuff out of the way. Here we go. We're going skiing in Florida, everyone. 20 total. Hardest round. Blast your Cardi B. Get it done. <laughs> Clearing that dumbbell every time. Ooh, finishers. Yep. In case you were wondering, they suck just as bad that round <laughs> as they have every other round. All right. But it is done. The hardest round is behind us. Ooh, the heart rate coming out just a bit. We got a three rep round to get through. <clears throat> Let's take inventory where we've come. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. All done. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. These are the easiest. We can still lighten out at the end of the tunnel. Three reps of everything. All right. We got enough time for maybe one more Cardi B song. Let's go, just three reps. Nice. Some high intensity training. Now, one of the benefits for high intensity interval training is that you don't have to do it for that long to get good results. In other words, if you went out for a steady state, you know, walk or light jog, light bike ride, whatever your preference is, you would need more like an hour of that to meet um, our uh, movement requirements uh, for the week, for the day, versus high intensity interval training, we actually only have to do that for a minimum of 20 minutes in order to get that physical activity requirement and we are already 20 minutes in. So if you're busy, like who isn't? Uh, I'm all about getting more bang for my buck. Same idea with why I chose all of these exercises. You get a lot of bang for your buck. It's a lot going on here. Lower body, upper body, core work, all very much engaged. All right, three rep round is done. We've got two, last set of lateral hopovers, and then we'll fly right into that really quick one rep round. Here we go, 20 minutes is done. That means that everything we do now is like icing on the cake. Get a little bit more, quickly move through it, but do not lose your form. All of these exercises flow 
really smoothly together as well. As if it was designed that way. <laughs> I guess that was kind of a selfish shout out to myself. All right, 20, last time we have to do it. Whew. Only way to get through it is to go through it. Here we go, 20. Landing soft, right back up. You can do this. I'm halfway. Last one for me. Woo, done. I hate those so much. You're still working, finish it up. And then once you finish, flow right into, I'm just gonna do these because it'll be even smoother for me. Flow right into that last round. One. 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 And done. 22 and a half minutes if you stayed on track with me. If you're on your own time, good for you. We finished our goal. Our goal was 10 rounds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. We finished 10 rounds of three very challenging total body exercises. Not only did we hit our goal and did we stay on track with those markers, but we faced those curveballs the way we should. We addressed them, we handled them, and then we kept moving on towards that goal. Awesome job, friends. Take a couple deep breaths here. I'm gonna stretch out. Arms overhead. Pull that left arm up and over to the right. Take a few deep breaths as well. Stretching even if just for a few minutes after working out is so important. Why? Why should you care about this flexibility part? One of the most important reasons is if you care, elbows out to the side, about the work that you just put in, this is where we start to recover from the work you just put in. And why we want to recover is because that's where our body starts to repair and grow stronger. We need to return our body back to that uh, homeostasis, back to that kind of happy, sustainable place. We revved up, overhead, we revved up our sympathetic nervous system during that workout. That's kind of like that fight or flight system. That's where our body gets really excited and work out. And we cause disruption during exercise. That's the point of it. We're disrupting our body. We're causing tiny tears and breakdowns. So that was hinge here. Ooh. Um, and those breakdowns are good, but we have to allow our body to return back to a place of homeostasis or we have to now initiate the parasympathetic nervous system, um, which is essentially the opposite of that fight or flight. It's time to activate that. Because that, again, that's where those gains are felt and seen. So you'll stay here holding stretches for at least 20 seconds is, is really great for stretching the muscle back out, slowing your breathing down. That's a good trigger for your brain, for your body to switch systems from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So all really good tools, stand up nice and tall. Left foot, left hand. Good. It's helpful if you are listening to Cardi B, maybe switch over to something a little bit more low key. <laughs> I go from Cardi B to Taylor Swift. But like old Taylor, not new Taylor. Switch. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking on this challenge. Like I said, so much more. Uh, details uh, in the blog post. Thank you all for your time, for your energy, um, and kind of embarking on these challenges with me. I hope everything else you do today is a little bit easier. Do not forget that goal and do not forget the markers along the way. Celebrate those successes and keep moving towards your goal. See you, friends.